This is the content talk for tying together standards and concepts inherent to a project topic. This is a outline of a brainstorming process that teachers who conduct teacher inquiry or project work with children plan active engaged learning experiences. Teachers who teach thematically may also use this process. One of the differences between the thematic teaching and the project teaching that you know is that children's questions drive the activities and learning experiences that teachers plan and provoke in their classrooms. So the variable between those different curriculum continuum stages um, of curriculum would be that as we examine the teacher anticipatory web, which on the left hand side of your screen, you should see the ice cream projects um, anticipatory plan. This was Madison uh, Cronley's plan, who was a student in our program. And to the right, you can see what we are going to learn about today, which is how we tie together concepts inherent to the topic with the standards that we know children need to learn. And that is tying things together with the bow. So at the beginning of a project, remember that a project in the project approach has three phases and it's a long term investigation that can last over a variety amount of weeks. Some projects last six weeks, some eight weeks, some 12 weeks, some 20 weeks. It really depends upon the topic, the children, the questions that they have, the investigating opportunities, and also the daily schedule um, in the teacher's classroom. If a teacher can do project work every day, then you may see a shorter amount of time. In phase one, that's when the project topic emerges. It can be initiated by the teacher or from the children's interests as the teacher observes. Um, where you see a P on this planning chart, that's where parents can be involved, opportunities for parental involvement. So once a project topic emerges, you complete an anticipatory web as the teacher and with children, you wanna explore, you know, what are some things that the teacher um, anticipates could be learned, what are the curriculum opportunities, what are the resources available, and then you might plan some focusing activities, um, some common experiences for the group. Now, because we are only planning three activities in the curriculum course and the prop box and play plans and the play course, um, we really are starting right there with these activities we are going to really be planning some focusing activities. However, when we get over to phase, oh, let me stop and restart that sentence. However, when we get over to phase two, where we begin the investigation activities, some of what you plan may represent this phase of the project work. So I'm going to encourage you to think about the ways that children can investigate. When you explored the Illinois Early Learning Project website, there were multiple examples of projects and I would encourage you to review those but with the lens of looking for how did children investigate? What kind of surveys did they do? What kind of observational drawings? What kinds of interactions did they have with experts to find out answers to their questions? What experiments did they try? Um, in one particular project, there was a prediction chart. So the children made predictions and then they went and investigated to find out if their predictions were correct. These are the kinds of experiences that are <clears throat> active where children are doing rather than being passive listeners. So we have the teacher anticipatory web. We've selected a topic that we know is accurate, meaningful, and relevant to the children that we're working with. We've mapped out the concepts that are about that topic. 
such as the purposes or uses of shoes, the characteristics of shoes, the types of shoes, where do we get shoes? Those four concepts are going to be my goals, my overall learning goals for my project with children on shoes. So as I organize activities, activities are going to be organized under these concepts to, again, help the children achieve those goals. I might rephrase these goals as shoes have different types of characteristics. Children will learn that there are different types of shoes and different purposes of shoes. Children will explore where we get shoes. And so under each of those broad concepts, I'm going to make sure I connect standards because in order to be meaningful, our project has to connect with the learning standards of the expected age or grade level of the child. So we have this as our roadmap and guide for tying standards together with concepts and that will lead to our first activities. Authentic learning experiences engage children because they're interesting, because children can be intrigued, and they can be actively doing something to explore through props, artifacts, materials, resources in the real world. In order to do this, we have to think about what are the concepts and content inherent to a topic. And then we have to think about the curriculum goals or standards. We are matching these things together. And we think about a bow as the unit that ties together these two particular ideas, concepts about shoes with curriculum goals. What's that going to look like? When we tie these things together through child engagement, we create learning experiences that simulate what we have already discussed about the brain and how the brain learns. Think back to the, the content talk on why we do projects. And there was a slide that showed the diagram of the brain. We know that in the back of the brain through the cerebellum and other sensory motor cortex regions, sensory information comes in as stimuli that the brain is trying to make sense of. The integrative cortex, which if you put your hands around your ears like headphones, that integrative cortex begins working quickly to make sense of this information and try to decide what is this? And then it moves to the frontal cortex, where the frontal cortex is the thinking part and decision-making part of the brain that's trying to decide, what should I do to act on this information? And then finally, when we put that headband across the top of our head, that is where that motor band, the actions, when we actually do something with that information, it is learned. And so we're tying together concepts and content inherent to a topic with curriculum standards because we want to strengthen the learning opportunities for both the child and the teacher. But in particularly, we want to increase the authenticity and the relevance of learning. How do we plan? these authentic learning experiences, which engage children. Because one of the things that we're going to do automatically, just because we've experienced school as long as we have, we're going to think about those lessons that we learned. We're going to think about what we've observed happening in preschool and kindergarten classrooms. You know, things are going to come to mind that resemble completing worksheets, completing file folder games, completing um, other type of pencil paper tasks, or maybe doing a, doing a lot of listening to the teacher as she or he models, and then imitating it. So we're going to have to get a little bit of that, actually more than a little bit, a lot of that, out of our brain and think about ways to plan what the teacher does, and what the children will do. So this is where the bow comes in really handy. We've got the concepts and, concepts and content inherent to the topic on the left-hand side of that bow. 
Then we've got the curriculum goals or standards that we're tying in. Then along the tie on the left hand side, we have teacher planning. So what do we do to plan authentic learning experiences? Well, we have to think about what are we going to do to the environment? What kind of provocation are we going to create? And what kind of questions are we going to ask the children to get them to do the active learning? On the flip side of the other side of the tie, we have to think, what will children do? How will they actively investigate? How will they explore? What will they do to observe, create, brainstorm, investigate, experiment, evaluate, compare, classify? If you know Bloom's taxonomy, you know that many of the actions I'm describing come from those higher order thinking skills. That's what we're aiming for with what the children will do. So when we take the concepts and the content that's inherent to the topic and we tie these with the curriculum standards or goal, we are ensuring that child engagement is going to be high. We do this when we ensure that we're selecting active learning experiences. So let's take, let's take a look back and think about the teacher anticipatory web of shoes. One of the concepts that was a main goal was that shoes have characteristics. So that's pretty broad because I could talk about the materials of the shoes. I could talk about the fasteners of the shoes. I could also talk about that shoes have sizes. So because I want to plan an experience that can be a focusing activity where children can actively investigate shoes in their own natural setting, I'm going to start with shoes have sizes. This will be a good focusing activity to build background knowledge amongst children. And I also know now that I've decided that I'm going to tie together shoes have sizes and numeral recognition, I'm going to think, what can I do to the environment? What can I do to create a provocation? What kinds of questions will I ask? Then I'm going to think, what can the children do to explore that shoes have sizes authentically and that will reinforce numeral recognition? I can make sure that in the environment, there is time to look at shoes. I can build questions into this time, such as, are the shoes of all our boys and girls the same size? How do we know? When you pick out a shoe, how do you know how big it is? We can set up a provocation. How could we find out how many children wear size six? size five. The provocation leads to doing something. That's one of the things that's different between the open-ended questions that we're going to do to guide children's thinking and guiding them in an activity. Then we think about what is it that would mirror this environment, this provocation, this question that children can do. Well, they can compare shoes. They can find sizes in their own shoe. They can find sizes amongst their group of friends in their classroom. They can figure out how to analyze the data, such as making a chart, making a graph, or grouping children together. In fact, if I were going to do this with young children, We'd start with grouping the items 
together the actual objects. We might utilize um, a large graph, something that's made on a tablecloth or a large paper, and then we transfer that information where each child could then individually make up their own graph. Here's another um, tying together, shoes have sizes. This time I've picked a different standard. This standard comes from DRDP, it's COG-5. Remember that COG is for science and math, and it's measurement. And so I, again, am building this off of characteristics. So here's some things that um, I brainstormed. You know, I'm going to set up some materials for measuring explorations. So that might mean I'm going to bring in different types of non-standard measurement tools, and I'm going to bring in rulers, measuring tape, things like that. I might sit down with children and make a concept map and ask them, what do you know about the sizes of shoes? Because I want to gather some information from them. I might observe the children and ask some open-ended questions. If I were to set up a provocation, such as bringing in different shoes that are larger than child shoes, adding in some of their sizes, and then adding in these measurement materials, I might say, how can we find out the sizes of these shoes? Which ones are small? Which ones are big? I might start off with those questions that guide some specific grouping and then move to larger questions. I might bring in an assortment of shoe boxes next and other shoe measurement tools. So as you can see, I have about five or six different activities that build on shoes have sizes just that go with measurement here. What could children do? They can compare the sizes of their own shoes, they can sort their shoes, they can measure their shoes with different objects that are non-standard measurement tools, they can measure with standardized tools, they can also record their observations, they can chart, draw, and graph it. So again, one of the things that you might see is that we are having the children do something um, to actively explore, and then we're trying to have children also do things that allow them to represent um, their understandings. And keep in mind, all of these things would not be accomplished in one activity. We would select um, a focus for what's going to happen, for what the children are going to do. So you're tying together standards and concepts about the topic. You need to look at the web that you've created, that teacher anticipatory web, and you need to think about where the curriculum goal and the concept come together. Where you see that, that's where you'll tie a bow. Now, sometimes when you work with Dr. Judy Harris-Helm and other trainers, they'll have you do this right on your web. I have found that that can be a little tricky because sometimes our paper is small and sometimes we have a whole lot of things that we've brainstormed. So what I like to do is I like to use plain white paper and have a bow for each one of, uh, have a bow, a single bow on each sheet of paper. So since we have three activities that you're going to be doing for this purpose of this course, you might even start off with three. And then you can go to your topic, concepts, and on the left-hand side, you can put those concepts. And then on the right-hand side, you can match some of the standards that you've already selected that you know were inherent to the topic. So for example, with shoes, we know that it's very math oriented, and so there's several different math standards um, that we've listed around the edge of our teacher anticipatory web. So now I would go ahead and I would begin individually brainstorming each one of these in its own bow. The next step is you make a list of these possible activities to extend the interest and tie goals and standards to the content of interest. 
you use the bow to plan authentic activities that engage children. So we stay away from teacher-centered teaching. What can you do to the environment? That's what we want to ask ourselves as the teacher. What questions will you ask? What provocations will be helpful? So you can record these ideas in a list of possible project activities. And that list will then later become a part of our curriculum grid. So don't worry about the curriculum grid right now. That's something that we will do later in the semester. But the curriculum grid is like a curriculum map that you will often see in school districts. And so I like to take you from this creative um, infographic type of planning, and then we move to the linear planning form.